Hello, I'm Chris Tachibana, and I'm a science writer and editor. I have a part-time position with Group Health Research Institute in Seattle, and the rest of my work is freelance writing and editing, and so I'd like to talk about that as a job and a career. About six years ago, mainly motivated by uncertain academic funding, but also by the realization that my most successful and satisfying projects were about writing, I switched from teaching undergraduate biology classes and working in a research lab to full-time writing and editing. If you're interested in a similar transition, I thought of five questions to consider, and I have a list of resources on the last slide. The first question to ask yourself is, do you think that you would like to work with words all day and every day? And remember that you have to work at a big picture level, taking scientific concepts and making them interesting and understandable to a particular audience. And you have to make information part of a compelling story. And that's true whether you're working on a news release or helping people with papers for academic journals. You also have to do detail work. So fixing grammar and spelling and fact checking. You have to hit deadlines and make hard word limits. Even if that makes, means taking some text that you really like and cutting a third of it without changing the content. The next question is about freelancing. So even if your ultimate goal is to be an employee for an institution or an organization, Freelancing can get you experience and contacts. It can also be a good way to do a soft opening of your new career. You can do a little work on the side while you keep your current job. The advantage of freelancing is what everybody says, tremendous independence. You often get to work where and when you want and in your pajamas if you feel like it, but you're not entirely your own boss because you have to meet the demands and the deadlines of your clients. You will also be running a small business, which most scientists are not trained to think about. So even if you're the only employee, you have to do business things like marketing and invoicing and meeting requirements about taxes and licensing. Also think about the financial consequences of having a monthly income that varies. Now to reassure you, I didn't know any of this when I started and I was able to figure it out by reading and talking to experts and hiring people. And I have a list of resources on the last slide to get you started. If this sounds interesting, then here's some more questions. Would you like to do writing or editing or both because some people have a strong preference for one or the other? Either way, it helps if you can be versatile and work in a variety of styles and formats and topics. Also think about if you have other skills that would be useful for an employer or a client. So maybe you have some expertise in graphics or web production or social media. The next question is if you want to take a targeted or a shotgun approach. Some of my science writer friends decided early in their career to focus on a particular topic like neuroscience or personal health or certain types of projects like writing books. That requires a targeted approach and you have to be selective about the work that you take on because you want to build your brand as a specialist. I took a shotgun approach so now I write for biotechnology magazines and science websites and I edit grant applications and I help people with government white papers and I like the variety. To get started, you need contacts. So tell your friends and your family and your colleagues that you're interested in science writing and editing and ask if they know anybody that you could talk to. You're not looking for potential clients at this point. You're just getting information and contacts. Go to meetings in your field, but also general writing meetings and even journalism workshops and seminars. Talk to people and give them your business card and ask them what they do and how they got started and if there's anybody that they know that you can talk to. The goal is just networking. Now for any job, you need a good resume or CV. So have one prepared and tailor it for the particular situation. 
But even more important for writing and editing, you need good clips, which are samples, and queries, which are proposal letters. Your clips and your queries should match as closely as possible the style and the format of the project that you're aiming for. So maybe kind of informal for writing web posts or more scholarly for working for an academic journal. For writing samples, you can use anything. So something you wrote for a class or for a newsletter, or if you don't have something, you can generate it. So for example, if you wanted to work for Nature, you could take one of their recent papers and write your own news and views type summary in the proper style and format and length just to show them what you can do. If you're interested in writing feature articles, look for the contributor guidelines in the media source that you're targeting and follow the instructions for contacting the editor. Your query, which is basically your cover letter, will contain one or two tempting paragraphs that are basically a draft of the article you're proposing be sure to match the style and the format, and also include enough detail to show just how fascinating this article will be to the audience of the media source you want to write for. For editing, you can make a sample of a couple of paragraphs that you edited, showing the before and the after versions, to highlight how you took some text and made it more grammatically correct and clear and concise. Get the permission from all the authors, of course. And again, match the style of the project you're aiming for. Now, also for scientific editing, a good way to figure out if this is something you'd like to do and also make a little money is to work for a science editing service. Look for these in the author instruction sections of journals in your field. Many of them now link to these scientific editing services that collect papers, usually from researchers who don't have English as their first language, and the companies send these out to freelance editors who correct them and send them back. So contact a few and see if they're hiring. If you want to work for a reasonably large organization, they might ask you to take a writing or an editing test. And don't be discouraged if you get ignored or you get rejected. If appropriate, just politely ask for feedback and then rework your samples and your queries and send them somewhere else. So my last piece of advice is if you are at all interested in this, just give it a try. Be sure to follow local and national requirements about licensing and taxes. But for me, transitioning from being an academic scientist to being a writer and an editor was not as daunting as I thought it would be, and it was a great career move. Here are some resources to get you started. For networking, I highly recommend the National Association of Science Writers and their local chapters. The book's Field Guide for Science Writers and Science Writers Handbook have terrific practical advice. Medical writing is a particular type of work, often creating defined documents, for example, for a regulatory agency. And you can find out more from the American Medical Writers Association and their local chapters. No low has excellent layperson's information about self-employment, and then Science, uh, AAAS, for whom I do some work, has great resources about non-research careers. Good luck.